Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 14 in Leipzig, Germany, and today we're here at the Ace Tech booth, and I'm here with Steve Branton. Steve, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Oh, great, great. Thanks for having us here. Pleasure. You know, it's, yeah, well, Steve, why don't we just start at the beginning? Who is Ace Tech and who do you help in this HPC space? So Ace Tech is a liquid cooling company. We do data center liquid cooling, and we've been doing PC liquid cooling for quite a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've, in fact, sold over 1.8 million uh, liquid coolers over the course of the last six or so years. What we've done is then taken that desktop technology and uh, evolved it into something that uses the same basic parts but works in servers and instead of delivering the benefits that are delivered to desktop, overclocking, quiet PCs, what we do is use the technology to take the heat from CPUs, GPUs, and memory in an all-liquid path completely out of the data center. Okay, okay, so you got that long history of you know, working with liquids and stuff and bringing that to a data center. So, so, so how's business going? I mean... So that's, that's really the exciting thing for us here at the yeah. show. We've talked a couple of times about the technology. Yes. Um, what we're really talking about here this time is deployments. Um, and we've gotten a number of them. We started with a deployment that we did at uh, Lawrence Berkeley National Labs last year. Uh, where we deployed 38 uh, Cisco units with Intel processors and did a, a variety of tests on those. Those have been put into a white paper that uh, is now available on the, the Berkeley website to talk about how this type of hybrid liquid cooling performs because we're cooling the CPUs, the hot parts, the CPUs and the memory, um, and then air cooling is used to take the remaining heat out of the building. That makes a very cost-effective implementation does have some interesting uh, impacts on how that works and the, and the Berkeley paper really describes those very well. Then um, we've also installed here in Europe at the University of Tromso in Norway. University of Tromso is the farthest north university, it's above the Arctic Circle. So free cooling at, at their location is no problem. Um, but they also only get up to a high of 12 degrees C, uh, which means you need heat all year long. Yeah. So one of the things that they want to be able to do is not work on their PUE so much as work on their ERE, or their energy reuse effectiveness. And the way they're going to do that is by using the heat from their data center to heat the campus building. Basically it's a district heating application. So this chart is talking about how they're bringing in water and they actually bring the water in at a very cold uh, temperature and they're able to warm it up to 42C, uh, and actually all above that, and capture about 70% of the heat, and then recycle that heat uh, for heating the building, keeping the students warm, okay. and the faculty. Okay. All right. Yeah, sure. Sure. So Makes sense. Uh, there was a paper here presented uh, on this at the conference here uh, at Leipzig. Another uh, deployment that we're very excited about is uh, one that we did, that Cray actually did, with the, the University of Mississippi, Mississippi State University, excuse me, um, where they deployed uh, a five-frack cluster. Um, and Mississippi State's reason for wanting to use liquid cooling was that they had uh, a limited amount of air conditioning in their data center. And in order to deploy more compute, they would have had to buy more air conditioning had they used traditional air-cooled system. By using a liquid-cooled system, they were able to take the CPU heat out uh, and reject it into the air environment with just a dry cooler. Dry coolers are much less expensive than chillers, and so instead of, instead of spending money on infrastructure, they were able to actually spend money on compute. On the, on the supercomputing and add, add cores and everything they need. That sounds yeah. terrific. Yeah. Well, great, great. And Cray's also deployed another uh, system at Kyoto University in Japan. So we're getting, we're getting some traction, which is very exciting. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we've also deployed um, our first rack at Redstone, which is uh, in Huntsville, Alabama. That's a program that we've talked about before with the STCP. The Department of Defense is working on saving energy like everybody else. Data centers are the biggest energy uses on many bases. And of course, there's other things the military would like to be able to use energy for. So by reducing their energy footprint there, uh, they're able to do uh, to defer energy to other locations and uses. The one thing that's exciting about that that's different than these is that's an enterprise data center. So we deployed uh, 20 DL560s, HP DL560s, 
um, and that's a highly virtualized environment. With liquid cooling of this type, you want high utilization. Idle, like an idling car gets lousy gas mileage, idling servers, <laughs> liquid cooling doesn't help them so much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're doing that. And then, of course, we have our longest running installation, which is at the National Renewable Energy Labs in Golden, Colorado. That's uh, actually been a cluster that's up and running for over a year now in, in production. Uh, and that was a, an upgrade of the um, Skynet cluster from an air-cooled data center into the new ESIF totally liquid-cooled data center there at, uh, at NREL. Okay. So, Steve, as, as you get these deployments, and you're, you're more than proof of concept, people are, this is production stuff going on, you see any uh, slowing down in the growth of this? Because it, it seems like density and all that just going up in the HPC industry. Yeah, we believe that this is this is going up, and as you've walked around the show, you've seen numerous people talking about liquid cooling. So I think that we're talking about something that's that's here to stay. Um, I think from our perspective, what's nice to be able to talk about is the fact that we are actually deploying the system, and it it is a system that's relatively easy to integrate and deploy in um, in existing servers and with new servers like the Cray CS three hundred.